Hi everyone, welcome to our social media pages here at Move Back of the Harlan. I'm Dana, the marketing manager, and I have Colin here with me today to talk to you about our shower door options. So, hi Colin, welcome. Uh, so Colin, I'm just gonna dive right in here. Um, lots of people will choose different options to keep the water in their shower. Uh, what are some of the pros and cons of a shower curtain versus a shower door? I think really what it comes down to, Dana, is a lot of it's personal preference and kind of what you've grown up with and things like that too. Uh, I, there's a multitude of people out there that will not do a shower door just because of the hard to clean nature of them, the fact that they have to clean them, whereas a shower curtain mm -hmm. can be literally thrown out and you can start fresh with it every single week if you really wanted to, right? Um, but at the end of the day, I think when it comes down to me giving advice on them, personally, when it comes to a tub, um, tub situation, if you have a tub, I'd say a curtain rod um, would actually be a better situation for most people. Uh, typically the people that have a tub are in more of your family homes um, yeah. that aren't going to a shower conversion anymore. And so you've got kids, you typically have dogs, and trying to work around a glass panel is kind of difficult. Say you're working on this side of the shower and your kid or your dog goes to the other side, you're then going to have to reach in over them, whereas a curtain you just literally can move left to right and it kind of alleviates that type of problem. Um, most people like the shower door, like the back that it does encapsulate the area so all that water that potentially can get out because your kid may be splashing water and it hits that curtain and goes mm -hmm. outside, that's alleviated at that point. But I think most of it, like I said, is personal preference. Um, and if it comes down to cleaning, we have some good options that are gonna help you with those types of problems. Okay, is there an option to do, instead of a shower door or shower curtain, just a enclosure or a walk-in where you don't have either? Yeah, so I think when it comes to like a zero, like a zero entry, um, shower typically elderly people are looking for that more higher end look. Um, normally with like a 60 inch space that most of us are trying to work with, um, it's not usually big enough. I usually like to have like some kind of a return wall, therefore the water doesn't have an ability to splash out. Um, but they're really kind of popular because it's one thing you don't have to clean. It's actually less expensive to do it because there isn't an enclosure there. Sure. Um, and it kind of gives you more of that high end feel at the same time. But once again, I think it's all about logistics and is that water going to be able to get out of the shower or can it be contained with the system? Yeah, with the space. Yeah, too. correct. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, with the shower doors that we have here, we have a couple different options on here. Um, I see one that slides and I see one that kind of swings open here. What are kind of the pros and cons of a slide versus the swing and vice versa? Yeah, perfect. That's actually a really good question. I get that quite, quite a bit. A lot of people will do a swing option just because they know it looks a little bit more high end and, mm -hmm. and it does. And they're typically a little bit more expensive because of that too, because of the hardware and the way it's set up. But really when it comes down to like water prevention and things like that, what you'll notice with a bypass door is obviously there's a track here. And I have one of these in my house and so what this allows the system to do is that water hits the panel and goes down and it stays within the shower. Mm -hmm. Whereas a swing door, as you can see here, it doesn't have any kind of thing to protect that water from dripping off. So it's yeah. able to come down here, and even though it has this poly guard on it, it can actually still fall off, and then you're dealing with water outside of your shower. Whether you have a back mat there to kind of protect that area, mm -hmm. it's still gonna get wet and things like that. Um, more often than not though, it's usually gonna be defined by the space that you have. Typically, if you have like a 60 inch shower, you're typically going to see a bypass door. It's just a little bit more efficient. You can enter from either side, whereas a swing door, you're kind of limited to mm -hmm. sides. So if you have a 36 inch shower, you can't do a bypass door because you couldn't get through there. Yeah. Um, even if you're average size, it's not happening um, because it would literally be half the space to get in. So swing doors are going to be a little bit more leaning towards your smaller showers just because of the space. Bypass typically on a larger scale is going to do that. Um, but obviously, like I said, a swing door will obviously give you a lot more higher end look because you can do it like you see here with a true fit style shower door with just the hinge system. There's no headers, no wall pieces on there except for the where they connect to the walls. Yeah. Or you could do something like an Uptown series where you do have that frame option, um, but you can get it as open looking as that. And that's where you get that high end feel. That coupled with the fact that the glass goes from like a quarter inch to a three eighths inch glass, that's, I mean, it just yeah, feels, it just feels looks, hardier. Looks right. more feels more expensive. Correct. Yeah. So you were talking about the different frame options, going like frameless to framed. Um, what are some of our frame options with our shower doors? Here? Gotcha. Um, so it, as frameless as possible would be something like a true fit. Okay. So like I was explaining, this system here literally has a piece of metal on the left and the right, but they're very thin. Um, and then there's actually not a piece of metal going over the top of it at all. 
even if you have an inline panel to make up some space and the door, there's nothing connecting that piece at top. And so when they go in between here, there's actually just a poly sweep that sits between there to kind of seal that shower up. Mm -hmm. And so that actually allows it to look completely open just like a window would be, right? Yeah. Whereas if you have something like a, uh, an Uptown series, you're gonna see this type of unit here where you do see the framing around the inline panels and the header there. And it's typically because you're dealing with a thinner glass. Okay. And so structurally, it needs to be a little bit more kept. Whereas if you do a thicker glass, just like a thicker door, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have to have that type of framing option. Sure. And then obviously when you do a bypass door, you're gonna have a header just because that's where the rollers sit and allow that door to slide. But the benefit of this particular door over your typical um, bypass styles is actually in the structure of it. Normally if you go to like your big box stores, you're gonna see a header, you'll see the side panels, the track on the bottom, which is typically like a U-track, mm -hmm. which is one of the biggest reasons people complain about them because things get caught in it. Yes. And then you're also gonna have a framed door because that glass is really thin. And so it has to structurally have that. And so that's typically when you get those doors that will wiggle and then make that like wobbly mm -hmm. sound, that's what you'll get where these won't have that. So these are actually, because of the thickness that they put on these, can be kept in a semi-frameless, Therefore, it's going to be easier to clean this glass, and you're not going to have to worry about that metal and metal rubbing like you typically see. And with the fact that this, and I know you guys can't see this, but this is actually an L track versus a U, so when the water yeah, hits it, it can actually just fall right off, and you can clean it by pushing your finger over it with like a microfiber cloth. It's pretty simple to do. Yeah, it's really, it's really a nice door, and I'm seeing that we don't have one here in the showroom yet. Um, I don't know if we'll ever put one in, but we actually can do these ones like he's talking about that look like little barn doors with the little yeah. tracks. In fact, our yeah. manager those has- pretty high end look. Yeah, yeah those are really, really, really neat. So um, I, the only thing that else that I kind of want to discuss, because we get a lot of questions here in the showroom about it, is the different glass options uh, that we offer with these shower doors. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple of different glasses, and then I'm going to show you guys, and then Colin's going to explain what those options are. My first ones I have here are the rain and the gritty look. Yeah. So those particular glass pieces that you're holding there, Dana, those are going to be part of the, the base price models. So with any shower door that you get, an exception of the True Fit, which only comes in clear glass, mm -hmm. you will have options uh, for the same cost of clear, rain, or that P5 is what they call it. It's like that grit look. It's a very, uh, very classical look with the yeah. obscurities. Um, so those are going to be your base pricing options and for the most part that's what people are going to go with It's a very common look. It's something that's not too extreme and a lot of people looking for resale value That's really going to help you with that um, One thing that's really important to a lot of people when it comes to shower doors is that cleaning factor That's why mm -hmm. we like curtain rods on our glass that we put in there through Arizona shower door They do something called a cardinal 10 protectant Which is kind of like this rain X that they apply to the interior of the glass panels which actually enable things to be cleaned easier, um, like your water spot and your soap scum. So it's a lot, it's not a big deterrent to people knowing that they won't have to clean them difficultly. Right? Yeah. And so those glasses though, if you go away from a clear, obviously, um, you're gonna, if you go to a clear, I should say, you're gonna have that water spotting if you let it go. Um, if you clean it regularly or you squeeze it like you should every day, that keeps it a nice clean system. But if you're not one of those individuals, I would highly suggest going to an obscurity, um, like I did in my house, because I don't clean my showers often as I, I, would, I kind of recommend you do it. But it does make it a lot easier to hide those types of things without having to be overly cautious about your cleaning. Um, so those are pretty popular. I have also here Glue Chip and Aquatex. We do not have these ones in the showroom, guys. I'm gonna let Colin tell you a little bit about these ones. Yeah, so the glue chip look, which is going to be on, I believe, your right side of your screen there, um, that is actually going to be a um, kind of a frosted look that you'll get from those. It's very intricately lined, and so it actually give you kind of that frosted look, almost like a winter morning or something like that when the dew is kind of frozen to the glass, whereas your Aquatex is going to give you kind of more of a rippling effect, um, kind of look a little bit more like a water type of spotting type of look so once again if you're trying to hide that water spotting that's really going to help you with that so yeah that's a neat one and those are like a little that. bit more in our mid-range uh classes as well and then i have two here that are completely different but uh i like both of them this one it says it's called smoke and this one's called reeded so I'll yes so your smoke obviously the darker one there it's going to add a tint to your glass um, sometimes people looking for a little bit more of a modern profile will use that type of glass. We don't use it a whole lot, but it is pretty popular with those people that are looking for that type of look. 
Whereas the read it is going to be very customer specific. Um, it's going to go with more, once again, with a more modern tone, um, just to kind of give those vertical linings and things like that are going to allow people to have that type of symmetrical feel throughout the room. It makes my hand look really skinny. <laughs> Maybe that's why too. <laughs> Okay, now I have three that I'm bringing over here, and um, I'll show each one of them separately, but I have the Everglade, the Autumn, and the Bamboo. Yes, those three are not widely used. As you can see, the intricacy of those particular glass pieces is pretty high profile. Um, these are gonna be for people that I would recommend are staying in your home. You love the look of them, which we do have full pictures of these when we bring them out to your house so you can kind of see what they actually look like. And they're actually very beautiful doors. Um, they do have a lot more character to them. And like I said, very customer specific. Um, something that's going to be the look that you're going for, maybe not caring what somebody else thinks. Um, I wouldn't say they're the best place for resale value, but if you plan on staying in your home, I think it's a very good option if you like that type of look. Well, thank you very much, Tom, for all the great information that you have brought to us today for the shower doors. I will let all of you know that I am in the process of trying to uh, add the pictures of these shower doors from the manufacturer to our Pinterest site. So if you go to our Rebath Omaha Pinterest page, you should be able to look at all the different products and looks that we can do here at Rebath. Now, if you ever have any questions, please put, that, put them in the comments below. We'd love to answer all of those for you. We want to make sure that you're a well-informed consumer. But until next week, we'll see you later.